Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. Our first conversation of the day continues. And as I said at the start of the show, we're focusing on International Youth Day today. Yesterday marked IYD 2018, and this year's theme is creating safe spaces and saving for the youth. Who better to discuss the maximization of the potential of Nigerian youth than Debola Williams himself, the founder of Red Media and also a youth advocate. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Good. It's great to have you in the studio. Thank you. Cool. So yesterday was IYD 2018. Did you get up to any events over the weekend? I was in the plane. <laughs> Coming in. <laughs> so this is essentially um, your first International Youth Day experience. Yes, apart from uh, celebrating the five young girls yeah. from uh, Nisha yeah. who won the junior gold medal mm. at the Silicon Valley World Pitch. Nice. Which was most inspiring, uh, led by Uche, wow. who's a Yali fellow like myself, uh, the Mandela Washington fellow yeah. of 2016. Um, and the five girls, you know, just showed, and I had a message on that day, which is, your location does not determine your destination. Wow. Um, so for young people in Nigeria, anywhere you are, from a bunk party, Saleko, you must realize that your nationality is not a limitation on your ability. You know, and so you must dream, you must That's go for brilliant. it and, and stuff like that. That's honestly brilliant. Maybe mm. we can even start the conversation there. We have such great sportsmen and women in the country, mm. right? So many young people who want to flourish. We had Asaba 2018 last week, and one of our runners, Shayel Gunlewe, came out to complain about how the tracks weren't even even. Now, yesterday I was having a particular conversation about the fact that we have a Ministry of Youth and Sports. How do you feel about that? How about what exactly? The fact that youth and sports <laughs> are put under one ministry. Listen, I mean, I, I don't even have a problem with, with, with the two ministries. Just, just perform. Just work. Just do what you have to do. You know, um, um, it's incredible that we would have our government officials fly in entourage to go and watch AJ, uh, uh, Anthony Joshua, box in the ring, you know, but we don't have a standard you know, boxing, you know, system in our country. Let's not forget know. that we actually even rejected Anthony Joshua first. Yeah, so if let's even forgive them. <laughs> you, know? you know, I say that uh, that was on the other side. Exactly. But Anthony has shown the potential of other young Nigerians. And so how about we leverage on that? You know, how about since Anthony came into the limelight two years ago, we have not had any major, any landmark change in that whole boxing system in yeah. the country, you know. So it's, it's the mediocrity that we've just come to find ourselves in. You know, a failure of economic management, which is reflected across the board, you know. And so the issue she is facing is the same as SARS, mm -hmm. is the same as hospitals, is the, yeah. it's the same as all of it, you know. And, and I like to, to, to talk about Singapore, mm. you know, and other nations around the world who seems to have gotten this right, mm. you know. And I know that Lin Kuan Yu in an interview uh, 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 once when they asked him, what did you guys do? You know, how did your country work? He says, we found the right things that were working and we continue to do Leverage them. Leverage on that, yeah. And that's it, you know. But our, uh, on the other hand, we seem to be more interested in the excuses for too many. When you, when you give you a Singapore example, they will say, oh, but Singapore is a smaller country. And I say to them, but well, there are many smaller countries in the world. How come they don't like Singapore? You know, economic management is not about population. It's just economic management. Yeah. Population will affect the economy and the productivity, mm. you know, but the management is a set of skill that is driven by competence, capacity, and then carried on character. Interesting, interesting. And I would say the one thing here in Nigeria that we are not leveraging on right now is the fact that we have the most youthful population in the world. The average age of a Nigerian, as, we, as we're speaking, is 21 to 22 years old. We have 110 million Nigerians aged 30 and under. What is the starting stone for actually beginning to leverage on this? You know, it's interesting because even the young people by themselves have created room have created several openings for any, you know, either government or private sector to be able to leverage on this. The first thing we must realize is that the current generation, the currency is talent. Before now, our parents' generation was certification, you know, doctor, lawyer, teacher. For our generation, it's acting, music, presenting, inventing, innovation. So you must first understand what the currency of that generation is 
our generation of currency is talent. And so you then begin to put policies in place that help them to be able to, one, grow the talent, you know, two, harvest the rewards of that talent. I can't imagine a country that churns out movies and is one of the biggest movie industries in the world does not have a piracy policy that works. Is it that we don't have the policy or it's just not enforced? That works. Oh, that works, okay. So we have a problem when it comes to enforcing laws in to Nigeria. economic management and enforcing. So it yes. comes back down to economic management. Absolutely. Would you say that Nigeria's main problem is the lack of leadership? I would say it's lack of leadership which has come from a foundational problem. Because the truth is, the guys who we put up as leaders didn't fall from the sky. The people who are in government at the moment or who were in government before now had friends in high school, went to secondary school with people, went to university with people. They all come from amongst us. And so the people who are up there are a reflection of who we are, which is why a man who lives face me, I face you, suddenly you have 11 children, I have 11 children. We both share toilet, bathroom, and kitchen. Then I buy a generator, and I call it, I better pass my neighbor. It shows that sense to oppress one another. And so there is a foundational problem which has taken over our nation from family units that is reflecting in the children that go onto the street and go on to take on leadership. So we have a general orientation problem. And so we need to re-engineer society, which was why 13 years ago we started the Future Awards, which was focused on building a critical mass of young people with a new set of values, which was simple, talent, hard work, hard work, hard work to achievement rather than wanting to just wake up tomorrow, yeah. one day, and become successful. Yeah. So there is a problem in our society that needs to be re-engineered, which is how you even grow as a human being, to focus on the greater good or your own self-actualization. That is so true. That is honestly very, very insightful information. Let's look at governance for a bit. What exactly, Debola, is good governance? And what is missing from our current policy that is actually stopping us from having good governance? I think, aside from leadership and economic management, what are the, sorry, what are like the essential and core issues that we are looking at in front of us today? I think for me it would be the fact that I don't get a sense that we had a government who envisions for our nation. And I think that would be my first major issue. Every nation that has worked had a vision for their people. 25 years vision, 50 year vision, 10 year vision. Even you as a person, Leila, you need to wake up with a vision, you need to set goals for yourself, and then be able to walk towards that goal. So for example, you have technology schools, you have technical schools, you turn out engineers, you turn out people with you know, architects, but you bring Chinese to build your roads. There has never been a plan to say, in the next five years, we want our young people to build our own homes. Which is the kind of thing China did that has led them to where they are. Exactly. I went to Southampton University once. Half the population were Chinese. My friend on campus said they don't bother to learn English. The day they finish, they head back home. That's an, a society that understands the value of global knowledge and then understands that you have to now take that global knowledge and put it in your own home to grow so you can compete like other nations in the world. A professor in Harvard once said, we never plan with Africa because there is no economy. Nothing is stable, so we can't plan with do you. Think that that's, do you think that's 100% true? So, it's, it is true. It is true because, you know, the flexibility of our, our resources, our policies, you know, excellence has a different meaning in Africa, mostly, largely. So you find bits and pieces of excellence, but if you take us as a group, you can't be consistent. I had a plumber come to my house once to fix my bathtub. He fixed it after taking about $300. It was still leaking. He came back, he took $200, it was still leaking. Guess what he told me? What? Oh, that's how they did it. That's why that he said That mediocre me. attitude. Exactly. So the reason why I am forced to agree with that statement is that if you look at it, look at our GDP, look at our budgets are full of loans. Our budgets are full of loans. Anybody who's budgeting based on loan is not bringing much to the table. So. Our budgets are aid baskets. So the aid has moved from just those, you know, those adverts you see on the airline where they say put a dollar here. It's moved to loaning to Africa. 
You know, so our human resource, which should be one of our biggest exports, is there, not growing because no human development is being done. And any nation what it's sought that does not focus on human capital development is not ready to play in the global stage because it is human beings that form the nation. It is what human beings produce and create that actually puts you on the league of nations around the world. So human capital development is the least you can do for your nation. You find in Africa that we are more concerned about building projects than building mines. Mm -hmm. If you build mines, the mines will build, build projects. Build projects, yep. And would you say that that's a problem of everybody just wanting to get into office and do what they can in their short amount of time and not necessarily thinking about sustainable development? It's because people are playing politics and not governance. People are doing politics and they don't see it as an assignment. When you realize that you're on an assignment, you have your clear goals. What has happened is that politics on the continent has become show and tell. Oh, I built 1,000 roads. I built two hospitals. I built this. I built that. So they have lost the concept of actually governing a people, which is by helping them grow and helping your resources, because if you realize that even the things they are building are built in borrowed resources, mm -hmm. no one is focusing on how do I take what is in my nation and grow it? How do I take my crude and put it to the finish line so I get more value? How do I take my granite? How do I take all my, my, my precious stones and finish the process? So what happened is that Africa, it remains a raw material ground. Hmm. And if you remain a raw material ground, you will never be able to get the value. Which is why, I mean, look at it. If you, if you, if you, if the corn that you buy, yeah. when it's done, it's not the same value as what you buy when it's raw. It's simple. It's as simple as that. When you go to the restaurant, you pay 15000 for some plate of seafood linguine. But if you go to the market, you probably spent about three or 4000 naira yeah. buying the things to make Very it. Very true. And so we haven't gotten that concept. I like to say that Africa is a startup. The continent, the countries on the continent are startups, which is why our assignment to the future awards is so important. Because what we set out to do was, over 20 years, we're on the 13th year now, build a critical mass of young people who are self-starters, who know how to grow something from, not, from nothing. Okay, Think about nice. it, Leila. Yeah. How many of your politicians have grown something from nothing? You want me to answer that question? Well, you can if you know some names, maybe okay. five. All right. All right, you know what? We're going to go on a quick break for the news. Jubika is standing by to give you all the updates. As soon as we come back, I am going to be answering Debola's question, and I'm also going to be asking him which way Nigeria. The same question I've asked to T.Y. Bello, Banky W, Nia Kimolayo, and more right here on Hello Nigeria. Don't go anywhere. As soon as the news is over, the conversation continues. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. Debola Williams is, of course, still in the studio. He has a question to answer. I have a question to answer. The question yes. is now who's going first? <laughs> you go first. <laughs> okay, okay. So you asked me. Remind mm -hmm. me. I asked you how many, how many politicians or, or leaders, you know, in our, in our country, uh, in the government space, public sector space, that you know that have grown something build something before going into office you know it's funny because as i'm thinking of this answer it's funny because i can come up with two names both of who are also women who are of course marginalized already <laughs> in nigeria's <laughs> polity but i would say someone like obia zekwesili someone like mobala johnson these are women who have built something up to the point where they have come into politics with their own foundation so they're not coming in to try and form a foundation. They themselves are the foundation. And that is literally what I, does, I call a direct representative of, representation of your people. If you can <clears> be a foundation standing in the policy, you're a foundation for us all. Not that you're going to go in there and be scrambling and looking for what you can find. But Fantastic. Yeah. So, so you'll find more of those kinds of people based on appointment. Yeah. You find like Dr. Abiyazakasi, Dr. Ngozi, Kondjo, yeah. like, many of those people based on appointment. But if you look at the core politicians, the core politicians, many of them, much more of them, you know, are not able, you know, to come from that background. And so for them, it's a lot about politics. And in politics, a politician just wants to gain power and retain power. 
simple. Everything in between is a game. That's why they say politics is a game. So the buildings, the structures, and all of those things are just the games. The games to be able to show and tell. It's like a monopoly board. It, <laughs> and so the thing that would make the real impact over a period of time is neglected. When Dr. Opie Zakasli, for example, was in government, mm. she cancelled the contracts in the Ministry for Education. Mm -hmm. And she focused more on human capital development. Let's train the teachers. When we train the teachers, let's create a more modern curriculum. When we build the minds of the students, we don't need to build walls. When we create hunger for them, they will stay in school because of that desire to learn, because of that dream you have sold to them. So nations that really understand how to grow, understand the indices of development, understand the more. emotions Even of people. Even the hospitals that you go, that I've run down, because I saw your conversation, if the doctors who are out there mm. felt like Nigeria valued them, felt like Nigeria gave them that skill, They'd be all the they would back. be here. You know, so a lot has to, if you, if you train some, someone, if you give off yourself to someone, that's why people are attached to their mothers. Yeah. Because if you mother someone, if you father someone, you know, they get a sense, which is why you find that many young people, because we are a generation of talent, can almost feel detached from Nigeria. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you do not feel like the nation has given you much. Our parents always talk about these good old days of free education, this uh, free quality education, because now there's some free education, mm -hmm. it's just not quality. They talk about the cars, they talk about the per diems and all the things that they got. So they are the ones who should actually have modeled to us how to love a nation, yeah. because the nation gave to them. They are the ones who are actually supposed to show us the example of focusing on the greater good and common cause. But it's interesting that they haven't. Many of our parents, not all of them, but many more of them are focused more on survival. Let's look at the way forward. Let's look at the solution. I've asked a couple people this question. It's extremely broad, so it's at your discretion. Debola, which way, Nigeria? I would think and I would pray and hope that we would have one private sector that would be more keen to do a lot more beyond their success, to do a lot more beyond their bottom line and revenue. Private sector that would be more keen on actually growing this burdening generation. Yeah. Because they're beginning to move to a burden. If we don't use them, this bulge as a blessing. I would hope to get private sector who will be more concerned about how we can help our schools and build laboratories and upskilled departments and upskilled teachers. I'll be more, you know, hopeful that we can get to that point. That's one. I would also hope that as a nation, we can begin to have leaders who are very much concerned about human capital development. Yeah. The minimum of any budget that is focused on human capital development for education should be 25%. We have 7%. So it's clear where we, where we are. And even at 7%, we can imagine how much of it never gets to do the work that it should do. The result is there when you sit down with coppers, when you see that people want to be employed in your organization, people who studied MASCOM, who, who studied English but can't string a sentence of English. Yeah. So the results are evident. So for me, my big thing would be human capital development. Exactly. We're not even competitive on the global market no. as it stands. And it's, it's quite and, shocking. And when, you, when, you have, when you focus on human capital development, it has to be based on the vision. So your human capital development is focused on the vision you have for a nation. Mm -hmm. So you're leading one to the other. Absolutely. We want to build our trains. Absolutely. We want to build Silicon Valley. We want to create the next Mark Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. We want to create the next Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. How do we get there? What is the Nigerian dream? What is the Nigerian dream? Because as it stands, unfortunately, I would say that the current Nigerian dream is the three basic necessities of life, food, water, and shelter. At the moment. And it's a bit shocking when the primary essence of governance is security and welfare of your people. Now, what you said is so profound. And, you know, the moment you said it, it hit my heart because I realized that I've actually even been in a bit of denial. Because really and truly, that is the dream. 
But when we talk about the Nigerian dream, people think and imagine that it has to be something like picket fence and family and dog, like the American dream. So we're yes. looking for something fancy. But if you have to be real, the Nigerian dream is those three basic things. Yeah, yeah. And that is why that is what works for politicians. Once you give someone that, you exactly. can get their votes. Exactly. But the Nigerian dream is much more than that. The Nigerian dream is we, we, are, we are such immense blessing. The Nigerian dream should be prosperity for all. Because all of us share such huge amount of resources. Every part of Nigeria, from natural resources to, 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 to precious stones, to oil, to tourism, Nigeria is such a prosperous nation if you go by the materials it has. Absolutely. So our dream really should be prosperity for all, that everyone may prosper. Absolutely. And it's such a shame that at the moment, the Nigerian dream is survivor. Let's look ahead at the solution. The 2019 elections are coming up, and as far as I am concerned, the youth are the ones who are going to decide on Nigeria's future at this point. How can the youth start to gain? How can the youth start to obtain? What is it going to take for us to see the youth at the forefront of Nigeria's politics and governance? I think the first thing is for people to realize that they can make a difference. The first thing is for you to realize that you as one person is enough, yeah. first of all. You see, the only group of people that has ever changed anything in the world is a group of committed people. It's not in thousands. It's not in, it's, I mean, we just talked about Singapore. They have about five million, but they have one of the best nations in the world. Mm -hmm. It's not about numbers. You are enough. Mm -hmm. Your one voter scan is enough. enough. Yeah. Imagine the last election we had about 40, about 40 million people who did not vote. And imagine if those 40 million people, each of them realized that I am enough and I am going to vote for so-so-so and so person. Imagine what that would do to the game. It would change the game entirely. Absolutely. Now imagine if you now have a person that you believe in, you as one person move from just believing to sharing that belief with 10 people or probably 100 people. And then those 100 decide to share with 100 people as well. That's ripple. And so people have to realize that for Nigeria to move forward politically, we need to begin to see the success of our leadership yeah. the same way we see our own personal success. Someone once told me, oh, I want to help, but I don't know what to do. I said, when you're trying to get the job you have now, when you went for a first interview and they rejected you, did you stop there? He said, no. I said, when you talk to your friends and family that they didn't help you, did you stop there? He said, no. I said, did you go out on the street? Did you walk door to door? I said, yes. I said, until you begin to see politics like that. Because sophisticated nations who their politics is advancing, yeah. and they're getting the near enough type leader that they want. That's what they do. They get on the street, they print T-shirts, they print flyers, they go door to door by themselves. Absolutely. They do pro bono work, you know, they do discounted work for people, they offer their services at huge discounts. They do all of those things. And so if you truly want this nation to work, then you must do all you can at the moment to get your PVC before the 17th of August. That's number one to do your transfers or whatever you need to do, get that first. Have that power. You see, this is, what I, this is how I see governance. You hire a group of people on a contract for either four years or eight years to manage the resource of your nation. Simple. These guys are contractors. Mm -hmm. And so you must have your power to hire and to fire. Mm -hmm. So when you hire them, and they don't do well, you can fire them. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you must also pay attention that during the four-year contract you've given them, if you do not go to the site to check if they are doing the work, they may not do it based on history of the continent. So it's like you hired somebody. Absolutely. And you go to the place and there's no gravel. There's no cement. There are no blocks. What do you do? You begin to make noise. And your contract is going to expire in four years. You had better do what you need to do. But we don't do that Do enough. you think the youths are ready, though? Do you think enough youths understand? Because we focus so much even just on the presidential elections that we forget that we actually have to start from the grassroots. Your local government chairman yes. is just as important. I agree. If not more. I agree. You see, I, I, I say this all the time. You know, and I challenge people when I speak, and I say, what is the name of your chairman? Mm -hmm. What is the name of your councillor? How many of you are volunteering in the office of your councillor? You can do better, go and volunteer. Mm -hmm. How many of you are involved in your ward mm -hmm. on your street? How many of you are involved on that local government level? How many of you volunteer your Saturdays? So it begins from that ideology that this nation belongs to all of us and we truly need to get involved. We focus on the center because sometimes when you're, when you're fortunate, 
to get something good at the center, it then ripples around the nation. Mm. But it's both center, top bottom and bottom up approach, which means that if you leave your word for charlatans, don't be surprised if your governance is a joke. And so you make a very good point that whilst we focus on the center, people must also remember how many people write letters to their chairman. If, for example, all the 54 LGAs in Lagos have been hounded mm. by Lagosians, if there's a protest in every local government every month, 12 people every week, the chairman will go and put the government under pressure and make sure that the government does not short their allocation mm. and actually gives them the allocation that belongs to them so that they can work. Mm. But even the people are not aware of what road belongs to state, yeah. belongs to federal, belongs to... You know, so those are the kinds of things that we must continue to engage with young people. Yeah. Go and learn about the laws. Go and know who is responsible for what road. Mm -hmm. Go and know what the responsibility of your chairman is. Mm -hmm. Know what the responsibility of your, of your local government, of your councillor is. Mm -hmm. Know the responsibility of your representative in the house. The representative of your senator. Uh, the, sorry, the responsibility of your senator. And I'm going to challenge you, Leila, perhaps, maybe, yeah. even Wazobia mm -hmm. wants to do this education yeah. where you spend some time. Yeah. I'm going to tell my guys on Webby Minds as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And why Niger as well? Yeah. You know, we can probably do a partnership because, you know, many times we also talk a lot with no action. Yeah. So you and I can go and get our different guys. You talk to your team here. I get my guys in Ruby, on Ruby Minds. I get my guys on whyniger.com. Yeah. Let us spend some time to create some content that tells the people what is the responsibility of your councillor? Yeah. What should you do when they are failing? What is the responsibility of your local government chairman? What should you do when they are failing? What is the responsibility of your member of house, both at national and state level? What is the responsibility of your senator? Yeah. And they begin to empower young people, get their email addresses, get their phone numbers, and encourage people to know their rights, and then demand for their rights. Because what can you do? You can only teach a man to fish. If he chooses not to fish, that's another kettle of fish. Well, challenge actually <laughs> accepted. That is a brilliant idea. And be rest assured that we will definitely be doing more to maximize the potential of the youth as much as we can. Debola, thank you so Thanks much for, for this extensive me. insight. Honestly, yeah. I did not expect this conversation to go on so long, but there was no way I could let it end. You had too much to say, and this is powerful. How can people contact you on social media for more information? Thank you. At Debola Lagos, um, simple at Debola Lagos, um, you can reach me. And just a final closing word yeah. you know, for young people out there. Go for it. Um, um, uh, people many times always want to look for mentors. Mm. You know, um, you always say, oh, how can, how can I want this person to mentor me, that person to mentor me. And I realize that there's beginning to be a, 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 an error in judgment with, or, or rather, the desire might be wrong. Because many times people want famous people to mentor them. Whereas you have that hardworking yeah. uncle who has grown from just a clerk to manager to MD near you who has learned certain principles over the years that can benefit you, which you can then use to become your own celebrity. But people usually focus on just famous people and mentoring them. Mm -hmm. It is wrong. That market woman, that fish seller near you, who has used the money from just roasting fish to send four children to school, and one of them has gone to Harvard, is a mentor is a role model. Those are the problems. We always focus more on the center. We always look at the glam and the gliss at the top. As young people, you must begin to look at the bottom. You must begin to learn to grow both ways, top bottom and top bottom. I did a lot of bottom up. You know, I watched people around me. I had uncles, aunties, grandmas that I sat at their feet to learn. It wasn't just the celebrities and the famous people. No, they actually were the icing on the cake. My real foundation came from people you might not know. So change that mindset, you know, in everything you do for your work, for governance, you know, for your own life and focus on what matters. The likes on Instagram, the feel good, is just for feel good. After a while, it will wear off and the reality will hit in. I hope that the feel good will remain when reality hits in because they're different. That is such a brilliant point to make. Thank you so much for that. Let's move on to today in history before we round up the show. Happy birthday to Aldo Maikari, that is the CEO yeah, of Chocolate Aldo, City. Yeah, Aldo, happy birthday. <laughs> it's, it's not in the country at the moment. He and I on, uh, 
most influential people of African descent. Amazing. Uh, honorary, you know, amazing guy. Happy birthday. I'll oh, do. Stephanie Busawi as well, my darling friend. Oh, go for CNN. it. Help me happy out. Help me out. Go for it. <laughs> Stephanie's birthday was yesterday. Happy oh, birthday. Amazing. You happy know, yeah. birthday. I can, I can do this with you. Are you, you know, like I'm that? on your bonus movie. I'm on your bonus movie. Yeah. It was launched yesterday. Moms at War. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, congratulations, Amoni. My name is Adibola Williams, co presenter with Leila. So, congratulations, Amoni. Otto Aronda. You know Otto Aronda? Yeah. The slum to school guy who quit his job in the bank yeah. to go and take care of children in the Makuko waters. Wow. Yes, his birthday was yesterday. He spent it with 50 of those young people. Wow. Taking them to the cinema, Koti Biola Labi, um, who just learned La Randa wow. Beat. You know, and then they had a party where Chef Rex also cooked for them. It was an amazing day. Those are people who are doing meaningful work. Wow. Stephanie followed and broke the video on the on the bring back our girl story, mm. you know she went to Syria alone and did. We, they we have need to go, go to the camera. Oh. let's continue talking. Okay, let's, then, let's say bye to bye, our bye, audience. Bye, <laughs> bye, <laughs> bye. So, uh, but I need to get a job. Yeah. Oh, over here. You do. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos, when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.